Hey, and welcome to episode number eight of Ask Ian. My name is Ian Westerman. I'm the head pro at EssentialTennis.com. Today, we've got a great question from Mazin. And he wrote to me and said, I sometimes play with players who are stronger than I am. And when playing, they can always predict my moves and win a point from me. My question is, how can I fake shots? Or what are some examples of how to fake a shot and how those fake shots can be performed? Okay, this is, quite honestly, this is kind of one of my pet peeves, this, this, kind of, this type of attitude or direction that many players frequently try to take with their tennis game. My, my short, you know, quick answer, Mazin, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, by the way, is don't try to fake shots. Quite honestly, in, in my opinion, in the long run, you're really much better off spending time on the fundamentals and being solid fundamentally in your execution of boring shots. <laughs> shots like a deep cross-court rally ball off both your forehand and backhand side that you can execute again and again and again and again. Or being able to execute an attacking shot off a weak sitter in the middle of the court. Being able to execute, I mean, that's a basic fundamental shot. If you want to be, if you have any aspirations of being, you know, a high level player of any kind, that's, a, that's an essential. You got to have that. So being solid, consistently solid at those types of shots, in my opinion, is 100 times more valuable than having a couple of shots here and there that are really sneaky or tricky. And really, I mean, honestly, think about it this way. For you to surprise your opponent consistently, I mean, let's think about this. Most of the opponents that you play, they've been on a tennis court for years. Many of them, probably decades and decades. You know, a lot, a lot, of, you, a lot of you that have tuned in today have been playing tennis for you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And so, Mazin, for you to go out there against that type of opponent, and really truly surprise them and fake them out, it's gonna to have to be something completely out of the ordinary, right? I mean, just think about that. For you to really catch them off guard and for them to say, whoa, what, like, what just happened there? I totally didn't see that coming. For that to happen for an hour, you know, and, and fool them over and over again enough to actually win two sets out of three, you're gonna to have to come up with some, honestly, some, some pretty crazy stuff some stuff that they've never seen before in their years or even decades of play. Well, there's a reason why ordinary shots are ordinary. There's a reason why you know, typical shots are typical. It's because when you watch professional level players or you know, college level players, there's certain fundamentals that are just necessary for success. There's certain elements that if you don't have a solid length of swing on your ground strokes, if you don't have a good follow through, if you don't have a consistent contact point, and if you don't have the ability to execute on those things consistently, shot after shot after shot, then you will not reach those upper, you know, high levels of play. It's just that simple. I don't care how tricky or, cra or crafty you are. Those types of players are one in a million. There's, there's a, a few examples like uh, a Santoro, uh, is it the first person and really the only person that comes to mind is somebody who's just completely out of the ordinary and you've just never seen anything like that before. I mean, that's, that's a one in a million kind of player. In my opinion, if you want to consistently raise your level of play, when you get beat by a player who's just clearly better than you, rather than worry about trying to fake them out and come up with something completely out of the ordinary, my advice to you is to go back and revisit the fundamentals and figure out how you can execute on them one step better or two or three steps better. You know, for, for me personally, I would much prefer that my students have a solid foundation and understanding and ability to execute the fundamentals or the essentials. That's where my website got its name. Essential Tennis got its name from my, my love of the essentials because that's where you're going to find your greatest success and your most consistent success. I'd much rather that you have one way to execute a fundamental in a deadly way, and that might be you know, a forehand struck down the line with good topspin and good pace, 
that really you know, consistently challenges your opponent and you're able to hit a winner with it consistently or you're able to th throw them off balance consistently and gain the upper hand in the points. I'd much rather that you have one weapon like that that's consistent and reliable and solid and steady and pre quite honestly predictable. I would much rather you be predictably deadly than feel that you need like five sneaky tricky shots because those sneaky tricky shots when, when your timing is off by a little bit, they're going to they're gonna just be out the window. And they're going to lead to more errors than they lead to winning shots. I can just about promise you that. So hopefully that makes sense. And I, I, don't, you know, I don't mean to discourage you from having fun out there. I don't mean to discourage you from experimenting and trying new things. That's, that's great. But if that becomes, I guess, the path that you take, your, your main mode of trying to improve and become a better player, that's when I don't think it's, it's very wise, to be completely honest. So focus on the fundamentals, focus on the essentials. That's going to be your ticket to consistent, steady growth as a player. So Mazin, hopefully uh, that makes sense. And again, I'm sorry if I'm, I've been mispronouncing your name this whole time. If you're watching uh, on YouTube right now and you've enjoyed my answer and you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like. Also, sub sub subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you don't miss out on any future episodes of Ask Ian or any of the other free lessons that I publish. Also, lastly, if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in a future episode of Ask Ian, please leave those right down below in the comments. Leave any comments or questions about what I talked about today as well. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and your attention. I appreciate having you as a viewer, and I'll talk to you again in the next episode. Until then, take care.